Hi folks, uh, welcome to the video manual for Disturbine 2. Uh, I thought I'd make a video manual for this software rather than a text-based manual, just simply because it will get you up and running much more quickly uh, with the software. Um, I'm going to split this video into four sections which cover the four different windows of the software. So there's the pattern sequencer, the main interface, the granular engine and the mixer which brings all of the sounds together. So we'll start off in this video with the pattern sequencer. Before we look at the sequencer properly, I just wanted to highlight that in the presets, each of the uh, presets which are sequences, um, which have the pattern sequencer enabled, are labeled SEQ just to sort of differentiate them from uh, the, uh, the non-sequenced uh, presets in the instrument. At the top of the sequencer then, there is a little on-off switch here, which uh, uh, turns the sequencer on and off. The latch button, um, can either be on or off. So basically what this means is when it's on, you can press notes and they will just uh, stay enabled and will uh, just carry on sequencing. If this is turned off, uh, if you press notes, then you have to keep them pressed down for the sequence to, um, to play. But with it enabled, uh, you just press notes and it'll and release the note and it will uh, play that sequence. The door sync here is um, by default, for each of the presets in free mode, that means if the uh, software is in standalone mode, it will just play uh, the sequence based on the rate uh, control here. If this is enabled, so uh, DAW sync is turned on, that means that the sequencer will play back as you um, play back uh, your um, transport in the DAW. So basically this is synced to the transport inside your door. The note order is either as played or random, uh, which means that if you uh, have it in as played, if you play a sequence of notes in a certain order, it'll sequence through those notes in that order, or it'll randomly choose uh, what order to play those notes in. Rate I've just mentioned, so it goes from uh, quarter notes up to uh, 64th triplets, which is quite quick. Um, but obviously, again, uh, will be dependent on your DAW uh, playback uh, if it's loaded as a plugin. Swing is pretty obvious, so it's how much swing is applied to, the, to each of the notes. And then octave is uh, how far away, in terms of octaves, the uh, sequencer will choose um, random variations. So the further you choose uh, values away from the notes you played, uh, it gives it a bit more choice as to where to play, uh, where to choose um, uh, which notes to play. So it's quite fun at higher values, because you can get, uh, let's just play this. Because you get quite nice kind of interesting variations. quite neat. Uh, then underneath here um, we've got three lanes uh, which are sending data to the rest of the uh, contact instrument. Um, down the left hand side these little dice uh, will give you random variations of the uh, lanes so it will just constantly choose random uh, values for you. Uh, this is quite fun if you sort of run out of ideas or if you don't want to kind of draw in data. Obviously you can draw in stuff in here and if you right click your mouse you can draw straight lines and stuff. I mean, that's all good fun, but uh, uh, that can get quite tedious sometimes. Uh, I just find it quite fun to uh, give the option for randomization because you can quickly kind of fire new, you know, ideas into the into the synth when you do that. Uh, then the steps down the right hand side, this is where things get really quite fun because uh, you can create some uh, really kind of crazy variations of, um, of different steps and you can get some interesting polyrhythmic variations happening uh, um, when you start choosing uh, time signatures which are kind of different to each other. So, um, so uh, let's say you, you, know, you could have something which was uh, div divisible by four, so um, sort of a kind of four four type time signature, uh, or you can start you know, pushing this to sort of more interesting time signature variations. But then uh, as I say, if you push these you know, quite far away from each other, uh, you can get some really interesting stuff. So let's say you wanted something which was um, sounds, sounds like it's in sort of 4-4, four, four, so using like you know, 16 variations in here, but then you can have durations and release values which are in different time signatures. So you're getting this almost like system type music um, happening. Uh, so you get kind of constant variations uh, happening inside the synth. And this is the sort of thing I really enjoy playing with in my own music, where you're just kind of pushing the 
uh, you're getting the computer to kind of give you ideas and you kind of generate this almost symbiotic relationship with the computer where uh, where you're kind of feeding it data and then it's kind of feeding you interesting stuff back um, from that data you feed it. So the other thing to say is that the uh, velocity sequencer here isn't just uh, controlling velocity. It's not just sending velocity data. It's also controlling a uh, low pass filter as well. So uh, you can do one of two things here. You can jump into the main interface and turn the velocity modulation right the way down. So this means that none of the velocity information coming out of the pattern sequencer is being fed to the rest of the instrument. That's just on the, the main interface. This also, by the way, uh, we'll look at this in a second, but this is also um, how much velocity information you're receiving from the, your controller keyboard as well. So this isn't just the pattern sequencer, this is a velocity modulation into the instrument, um, which means that velocity now is not being sent, uh, for it is being sent, but it's not being read by the rest of the instrument from this uh, velocity lane here, but it is going to be controlling the filter modulation. So we've got an amount control here, uh, which is uh, saying, well, I'm going to feed uh, this data here into the low pass filter. So um, I remember when I was using Cubase uh, a number of years ago, there was a really great um, pattern based filter in there, and I really wanted to emulate that in this instrument. Uh, I just really loved that. So it's really great to be able to sequence filters using uh, little pattern sequences. Um, so yeah, so I wanted to create that in this instrument, and that's what we've done here. So um, you can take this data and invert it on the way into the the filter here so that means that um, positive values in velocity give you negative values to the filter cutoff so that's kind of cool if you push the filter cutoff uh, open um, and that means that will close the filter um, based on these steps or the other way around if you uh, close the filter all the way off and then keep that as not inverted that means that this these will now open the filter uh, as they play uh, the amount of control obviously is controlled by the amount and there's a resonance uh, control as well which gives you some uh, resonance input to, to that. So onto the main interface then, the velocity modulation uh, here uh, is um, indicating how much velocity data is fed into the rest of the instrument. So if I were to play um, uh, hard uh, notes on the controller keyboard and have this turned all the way up to 100%, uh, that will be sending high velocity. Uh, if you push this down, uh, or if I play um, uh, soft notes on the keyboard then obviously it will be playing uh, softer notes into the instrument and vice versa uh, uh, if you uh, turn this down. So if you turn this right down to 0% then no velocity data is being fed into the instrument as you can hear in this, uh, in this example actually. I'll just stop the pattern sequencer from playing. Um, so the envelope controls then are pretty self-explanatory. It's important to note that when you're uh, sequencing um, uh, from the pattern sequencer, obviously there's a release value is being sent from the pattern sequencer. So that won't be uh, this uh, um, control here won't be being used uh, because it's receiving uh, release data from the pattern sequencer, but when the pattern sequencer is disabled, um, then uh, this will be just uh, feeding standard uh, release data. So it's just a simple ADSR envelope, um, uh, attack, decay, sustain, and release um, values. So pretty self-explanatory. Um, there's two filters, uh, low pass and high pass. This is really useful for shaping sound. Uh, obviously, if you're finding there's too much bass or there's too much high, uh, high frequency stuff, or if you want to create some special effects using kind of filter sweeps, you can do so. I've created uh, 
on off switches for both low pass and high pass filter because I found sometimes that if you're working with certain sounds even if you have the high pass filter turned right the way down it can still attenuate some low frequencies so the same is true also of the low pass filter but it's not so audible because you're so high up in, uh, in, in frequencies but you certainly notice it in the high pass filter so I've created uh, um, an on off button here for both of those so if you're not using them you can keep them turned off but uh, if you do use them you'll need to enable them to, to have these control, uh, controls actually do anything. Uh, the filter modulation is uh, kind of interesting so what this does is uh, apply a uh, another low pass filter um, but as a modulator so it's uh, not uh, as an insert effect it's a modulation effect which means that it uh, is controlled by importantly attack and release so uh, if you have the um, envelope turned all the way up to 100% then attack and release will uh, become uh, useful controls they will uh, open the filter over time and it, you can see the time value in here and then release the filter over time when you set the release value and again you've got controls for cutoff and resonance in there so you can see the filter modulation in this preset resonates um, which uh, sort of shows the the filter working over time so as i play notes here so you can see the filter is closing based on the attack. Um, if I was to invert the envelope, Uh, the reverb controls give you width uh, of the reverb, the overall size of the reverb, uh, the time of the reverb and how much reverb is on this particular instrument. Okay, the next window we're going to look at is the uh, granular engine. I'm going to choose the Transneptunium Objects uh, pattern sequencer for this one because it uses, if we just jump into the mixer, it uses the granular engine for part of its uh, sound here. Um, we'll look at the, the mixer in just a second, but jumping into the granular engine, there are um, two granular um, synthesizer engines inside uh, Disturbine 2. Uh, these are controlled by the mixer here, so granular one here and granular two here relate to these two granular controls here in the granular engine. There are essentially four controls for each granular engine. There's smoothing, tuning, and this XY pad which controls length and speed. This is grain length and grain speed. So this particular sound is made up of um, granular engine two, um, group six and group three, which give it this, uh, this uh, particular sound you're hearing but if you start modulating this uh, parameter around you can hear uh, kind of what it's doing so uh, let's just just using the mouse to do this I could use the controller keyboard actually let's just do that um, so I've just uh, got my um, complete control here so I can just kind of cool little interesting things. The smoothing control is quite interesting because this gives you a kind of digital harshness if you pull it down but makes it really kind of smooth as you push it further. Quite neat. Um, tuning control uh, is in um, semitones. I, you can just play with this all day, this thing. This is a trouble. What's really cool with this, though, is um, with a sound like this one, with a preset like this one, 
it's only making up kind of part this this granular engine is only part of the sound so you can kind of modulate this thing around and get these these interesting textures but at the same time as still keeping the main sort of elements of the sound the main elements of the sound sort of uh, playing so you can get this kind of evolving sort of textural thing throughout your music which is kind of interesting so you still got this sort of uh, the main elements here of the of the of the sound but then this one you can kind of modulate around with this XY pad it just just gets really fun and just gives you this constant kind of variation in your music which if you do it really subtly it's just really really cool so um, So yeah, so uh, so that's the granular engine. As I say, there are two. Let's just actually uh, jump into the mixer and turn these two down. Just go to this one, just so you can hear this really. So this is the second one. Actually, just turn the tuning up a little. Just turn the smoothing up a bit, just to make it a bit. And then finally, the last window is the mixer. I've just uh, used the BOAC preset for this just to show you actually that you don't have to have tons of elements to your sound designs uh, in this instrument to make things interesting. So um, I actually find sometimes just one or two of these uh, elements brought into the mixer uh, can create some really quite beautiful and interesting sounds. So, it's important to note that uh, basically what you're turning up and down here is uh, groups of, uh, of sounds. Um, when you turn the uh, amplitude right the way down to zero in the mixer, it essentially turns that group off. So it's not using any additional disk or CPU um, uh, when you do that. So it's essentially muting that group. Each channel has a spread control. to make it wide or narrow and then obviously a pan control as well. Um, each of these is double uh, double clickable with the uh, command click on Mac which uh, resets the uh, the individual parameters. So uh, let's just bring in some additional elements to this and see what happens. So you can see it brings in sounds here all of them of course when they're brought through the mixer all of them come through the main interface so the ADSR envelope is controlling the shape of all of these sounds in the mixer um, and these are your uh, individual sounds that are uh, built into the instrument and then of course the granular engine I've not played with this by the way I'm, this is just off the cuff Where should we go somewhere like so you can see you can bring in extra tonal elements to the instrument which creates some really nice sounds
So that's Test Turbine 2. Thanks for watching this video. Hope it's been useful and uh, has given you some insight into how to use the software. I uh, hope you enjoy um, playing with it and uh, yeah, we'll see you in the next one. Cheers.